Hi, Kate. Welcome to the Women Making Podcast. Hola from Costa Rica. Thank you so much for having me here. Yes, absolutely. So glad to have you. And yes, you are in Costa Rica, which sounds just lovely and delightful. It is. It is. I've got a beautiful landscape here and looking out at the mountains and the jungle and all the beautiful birds here. <laughs> yes. Now, Kate, what brought you there? Because I have to say, I have so many people in my life that one recently moved to Costa Rica. Another is planning to move early next year. I've been drawn to go there. What, when did you move and what do you think is going on with Costa Rica? <laughs> Why is it, it's becoming right. like a, a, like a place, a, a mm -hmm. destination for many of us. Yeah, it's completely a hub. It's completely a portal of feminine mm -hmm. awakening consciousness. Um, it's a very exciting place, actually. Lots of people are creating many amazing kind of new earth um, projects here. So I, I arrived here two years ago now, um, but it feels like many lifetimes have passed. And it's been a complete journey of initiation. I think anybody who lives here um, will, will tell you that. It's the, the energy is very like, um, like Sedona or Mount Shasta, or these vortex plate points on the earth, which mm -hmm. activate us. Mm -hmm. um, and push us into our discomfort as much as our, you know, soul essence. And um, that I was guided here actually um, many years ago. It came through actually in a meditation. Uh, I was told that I had work to do here, that I was going to live here in the future. Um, I had no idea when. Um, and it was actually in between... Uh, the the uh, lockdowns in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. I'm originally from the UK. That again in meditation, I was told book the flights now, um, and I think it was just a, a three week window in between lockdowns. So yeah, I was glad that I uh, I listened and I took that that leap. Yeah. Wow. You just slid right in there, right in between the <laughs> lockdown right. and your way through. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. So now, Kate, your work is strongly based in higher feminine wisdom and really sounds like sort of harvesting and, and bringing that in right now for a lot of women and a lot of people. And, but you're also sounds like maybe your work started as you worked in hypnotherapy. You worked as you did a lot of regression work. But more recently, you've started doing something called the, the Diamond Heart Teachings. So I'd love to hear a bit about, you know, what your work is now, the work you're doing in Costa Rica, what it looks like that you're doing, but also what it's based in. Because it sounds fascinating and really um, has some different concepts that I've never heard before in terms of how we can really connect with that feminine energy and how we can bring it forth, how we can embody it and kind of tap into our gifts, right? Right, yes. Um, so the the Diamond Heart Teachings has been coming through uh, divine downloads during meditations, uh, dreams, uh, just day to day. It's been an incredible and profound, uh, mind-blowing journey for me. Uh, my husband's witnessed it here. Um, how much has just been coming through every day, probably for, for months and months. Um, but ultimately my whole journey has prepared me for this moment, like all of us, right? All of our journeys prepare us to step into our missions, whatever they are. Um, and the Diamond Heart teaching, uh, they speak about the permanent reopening of the heart chakra. And so they acknowledge that humanity the feminine in particular, these teachings speak to, um, they acknowledge how the feminine principle of creation has been very suppressed. So the fem how the fe female has um, hidden herself and how she has a tendency to um, hide or run away due to her trauma. And it is through the permanent reopening of the heart that actually in turn opens the third eye in that 
permanent, sustainable way so that the feminine principle of creation is able to access her innate gift of oracle. And this is something that has been really woven through my journey. As you said, I've, I've worked in uh, hypnotherapy. Um, it's always been a very big principle and ethos of mine to help people to access their subconscious selves and their superconscious selves. So to uh, reintegrate that um, into the conscious self. Obviously the conscious self, just as a side note, I always remind people it's just 5% of us. 5% of us is conscious, whereas we have 95% of us existing in um, the realms beyond the veil, so to speak. It's the subconscious, the hidden parts of us, but also the incredible multidimensional aspects of us, our angelic soul aspects that are waiting for us to reintegrate. And so it's through the, the female principle, it's through her vision, through her sight, through her perspective that she not only heals, but she also creates. And so this is ultimately what we're um, reawakening now, all of us, hu humanity as a whole, whether we are, you know, in more of a masculine form or a feminine form, it is through our perspective, it is through the inner work, um, it is through the remembering of all those different parts and pieces and layers of us that we are healing and therefore we will create a new world a new society new modalities new teachings mm -hmm. um it's a really exciting time on this planet so the diamond hearts teachings are an acknowledgement of this time this transition and within the diamond heart teachings there are multiple different factions there are multiple different teachings one of which the main one, one which i'm uh, sharing now is the eight pillars of venus so the eight pillars of Venus, just to break it down very quickly, is ultimately a toolbox to assist the feminine in her awakening journey, helping her to access and cultivate and embody her oracular gift in a sustainable way so that she can align to her best life, her highest timeline, um, create her future with the most joy the most abundance the most love the most peace um, in that sustainable way and so it guides us through these eight pillars which are columns of feminine wisdom that are accessed through all of us they are part of the divine mother they're part of the divine female consciousness and the eight pillars is this toolbox to help us remember awaken and integrate embody all of these eight pillars of feminine wisdom mm -hmm. wow that is, that sounds incredible and again i love that you're speaking to this because i haven't heard something so specific and something that actually offers because there's so much talk about reconnecting with our feminine intuition with our feminine instincts with our feminine gifts that's a big reason why i started this podcast is to bring people on who are doing the feminine work who have tapped into their feminine gifts and they're bringing them forth, which of course are, you know, aspects that are more holistic and sustainable and natural ways of healing, of releasing burdens, releasing blocks that we have to our true self, because we're too in ego, we're too stuck, you know, with struggling with our trauma, with wounds. And to me, a lot of the feminine is that which releases, it releases blocks. It's, you know, feminine, we think of water, the that's usually the analogy and water is flowing. It knows that it, it can, you know, continue on and it can take, you know, change different paths at different times. It doesn't have to be so structured. Right. And right now, as you described, we, we, there's a major absence of that. And, and, you know, you talk about Oracle and I would love for you to share a little more about for those who might not know what an Oracle is, but to me, it means someone who is, you know, if your third eye is open, you see things that aren't there or that don't exist yet but you see them as if they do exist. And to me, that's very powerful because, you know, as we know, time is not actually linear. It's all existing. So the future that we dream of, where people are living more peacefully, where people are living more sustainably, more in a more community-based cooperative way, people are more free. They're not so burdened by their fear where we're more in a place of love. To me, that's 
what I see in a vision of the more feminine world or more balanced, right? Where we can love what is, but then have that masculine energy of beautiful, creative growth and produce things that are, you know, exciting and for the good of everyone. But the problem is that people are afraid to dream. People think that this is just the way the world is and there's no other way. And when people tap into what you're describing as our, our Oracle self is what, I mean, you can share your thoughts, but this is what I think of is that it's envisioning the world that already is and then making it so. Mm. Mm, beautiful. Absolutely. That is so perfectly put. Um, the Oracle as I said, it's it's been a concept and a perspective that has been work, woven through my own my own journey. Um, I, I've had many premonitions and and psychic experiences throughout my life, mm -hmm. um, and until a point, I wasn't able to understand them. I wasn't able to ground them. Um, sometimes they would actually be very traumatic to me. Mm -hmm. And so I've been taken on this big journey of really understanding um, how this reality works and lots of different perspectives of the quantum. So this is absolutely to do with manifestation and the law of attraction and all of that kind of stuff. But it is also about, like you say, how time is uh, cyclical, how it's not linear. Um, I was shown um a lot about how future present and past is all interconnected mm -hmm. and through the power of our perspective the lens that we view ourselves first of all um primarily it's it's the view it's the perspective on ourselves and then the perspective that we have on our reality it's through refining this through doing uh, the inner work right um that can help help us hold as you say these higher perspectives of um a beautiful reality based in peace and harmony and love and co-creation um and healed consciousness where we can create from that place so absolutely the oracle is um she the oracle is an innate feminine principle so it is it's all about the internal. It's how we, as I said, it's how we view ourselves. I always refer to our inner cosmos. It's our inner reality that we are cultivating. We're healing. We're bringing more alignment um, and more integration with our soul. And through that, I say the stars and the external reality will align for us. So we're literally rewiring our inner cosmos, our inner reality. So to create a sustainable reality externally, and it is through that power of vision, it is through the power of the feminine vision to hold that in a sustainable way. This is how we create. Oh, amazing. And, you know, Kate, you've had some pretty remarkable ways that you've been like shown this information and explored it. Could you share it? You, could you share with me a little bit? You, you did say that you um, like you traveled kind of astral traveling, maybe where you've like traveled out of your body, but also been visited by light beings and other, you know, entities that kind of come in that are wanting at this time to connect with those here on earth because they're already there. I feel like they're in this place where life is more sustainable and cooperative and very, very different from the life we know here and wants to impart this information, this vision with us. So what was, when did that first happen for you? And was it alarming at first or was it comforting? And what did they give you direct messages or was it just like an intuitive sense you got when they visited you or can you, yeah, share about that? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, I would say it was both overwhelming and comforting when I started to receive communication from these beings of higher light consciousness that I have got to know are not separate from myself. They are part of my soul. They are part of my soul family um, existing in higher bandwidths of frequency. Some people call these dimensions. Um, I like to describe them as bandwidths of frequency. It's like a radio station, you know, it depends which one we're tuned into that we receive. And so we have all these different layers of ourselves, of our soul. Um, 
and we are all connected, right? So we are all connected. So it could be an aspect of my soul. It could be an aspect of my soul family. But in those higher dimensions, those higher bandwidths, we're all so connected. And so when I started to receive uh, communication from, from this higher light consciousness, this is how I describe it, because I don't really call them spirit guides anymore. I used to. But because I see them as an extension of me, um, I do often just refer to them as um, higher beings or light beings or soul aspects, actually. Yeah. Um, but due to my childhood, so I actually had a lot of out-of-body experiences um, from a very young age. And I had lots of premonitions and psychic rememberings. And I actually thought, I was crazy. I, I didn't really tell my family, uh, didn't tell most of my friends, just people really, really close to me. And it was very discombobulating for me. It was very ungrounding because I didn't have any context. So I actually grew up in quite an atheist environment. Um, I didn't really have a context of spirituality or or God or source or anything beyond this physicality. So those experiences for me were quite traumatic actually. And I doubted my own sanity for many years. Um, this was actually perfectly by design um, that I understand now my soul chose to uh, bring these awarenesses and perspectives. Um, and by the way, I'm a projector human design. So for all um, other people who are projectors out there, they'll understand because the projector as um, a human design or a type, we we hold different lenses of perspective and awareness so to share them with others. Mm -hmm. And so as I kind of grew up and as I went through my, my spiritual awakening, um, I was able to understand the genius of why I had these so-called traumatic experiences and it was really so that I can help others um, to to kind of integrate these other layers of their soul but from a very grounded perspective and understanding the importance of healing first of all primarily the root chakra um, if we want to hold these higher states of consciousness or these higher perspectives in a sustainable way we need to do that groundwork. We need to uh, make sure that we have really healed the root chakra. So um, I feel like I'm going off on little tangents here, but to no, get this back is to great. Your hey, this is this is wonderful for so many reasons. One is that you know you, you mentioned that these things were happening to you, out of body experiences and possibly astral traveling, and I think that happens to a lot of people and they don't know what to call it and they don't know what to think about it. And they very, very well may find themselves in a home that isn't very open to this sort of esoteric um, cosmic spiritual talk or exploration and they keep it to themselves and they think that they're crazy, just like you described. And I think yeah. it's important for people to have ways of understanding that it's not crazy. It's actually just means you're awakening, right? It means you're developing your senses. You're, you're becoming more reconnected to right. source which, which can be hard on this planet because most of us are very disconnected. This planet in right. general is disconnected from source. And that's why we, so many of us think this is it. We're just the only planet in, this, in the whole universe that has life. And this is all you got. And you're meant to come into life and work nine to five and have three kids and get married. And that's the end of the story. But when you start to see the infinite possibilities and the next steps in the you know, cosmic evolution, you might think you're crazy, but it's because it sounds so different, but it's actually just because where we are now is so limiting in what we are open to. Exactly, exactly. And it goes back to what we were saying about, you know, the feminine principle has been in hiding because of these perspectives of society or from this very, very limited lens. The feminine has, has hidden her truth in lots of different ways. It doesn't necessarily mean um, this big psychic experience, but in many ways we've we've hidden up that feminine principle. And I always say, um, you know, the foundation of of my teachings and my work is we are returning to 
our multidimensionality. We are actually humans, are actually multidimensional beings. It's just that we haven't remembered all of those different layers of us, all our different superpowers, all our different abilities and um, co-creational uh, gifts that we hold. Um, so we're absolutely returning to that multidimensional state. And it was just so my journey, my soul's choice to experience the multidimensionality before I had really laid the, the groundwork for me to hold it. Mm -hmm. And so since that, um, I had a, a, a big shift in 2017. Um, so 2017 was a big shift for me in my awareness and my consciousness. I started to make sense of things. I started to find a context to ground all of this into um and that's kind of the basis of my work i suppose how i help others mm -hmm. um, but it was all about you know this multi-dimensionality but how we can integrate it into this human experience how we can integrate it into being a human it doesn't need to be separate you know we don't need to have our human life and our spiritual life you know that's kind of ridiculous to me we are spiritual yeah. beings like every day is part of our spiritual journey no matter how 3d or like matrix it feels or how challenging it feels it's yeah. all part of our it's all part of our spiritual journey and it's just you know the lenses and the perspectives that we hold really help to guide us through um whatever comes up in our day-to-day -day human human lives yeah yeah i i feel we're, we're really more meant to be walking around life constantly exploring our spiritual experience and i think that that's the thing is that we don't because we spend most of our lives in very conservative ways of moving through life where you're supposed to dress a certain way and act a certain way and so we're all in a little bit in prison to how we think we're supposed to act rather than just having this be like a free expressive exciting place where we're exploring the next level of dimensions and our dimensionality as cosmic beings and our perceptive abilities but we're so limited and we're so we're kept on this very small scale of what we explore but we also have so many have to's like if you don't do this then you can't make a living you can't even survive if you don't so we we're supposed to work to live and there's no time for exploration which i truly believe is the purpose of being alive and can you imagine a world where we literally were just sort of all together exploring and wandering around and didn't feel like we had to like have a mortgage and work a job just to stay afloat like it was just we were more cooperative with one another so there's enough to go around if we share everything um i don't know if i'm making my point here but do you know what i mean but if it's more of a i mean because i feel like that's how when I think of, you know, other beings on other planets, I feel like that's how they live more so. It's very open, very transparent, very much about how are we consistently evolving our abilities. And we don't right. do that here, not openly. Like you said, it's very separate. We have our human lives and our spiritual life. And that's so crazy. And we make about this, most people make about this much space for their spiritual life. Because they're like, well, how am I going to have time for that? Because again, I have to, you know, make a living and raise the kids and do all these have to's. And I don't know how we got there. I feel like it's a very masculine thing, right? Because we are majority masculine and it's very masculine to say we have to have these structures. Life is about structure and, se and separation because that's what the masculine knows. It's how it exists. And feminine is more about, you know, expansiveness, that without form. Right, right, exactly. Well, I actually, the way I describe it is we've been in a state of inversion almost you know, the state of the, the planet, in a way, yes, we have been experienced more of the doingness, which is, you know, the electric, the masculine, but we haven't really even been experiencing the true masculine. It's been this inversion. Um, and so I think we're moving into an era where it's, yes, it's the revival and the restoration of the feminine, but it's also the, the healing and the balancing of the true masculine, which isn't, you know, the world that we've been living in. It's, it's been so extreme. Um, so yeah, it's a really exciting time. And, you know, I think it's, it's a funny thing. It's an ironic thing because, and this is what the diamond heart teachings and the eight pillars speak about. 
which is, you know, people make, as you said, like this much for their spiritual journey. And yet what they actually don't realize is every moment of their journey is spiritual and so it's actually we don't even need to bring like such a dramatic shift to our lives it's just these perspective shifts that can really help to bring more unity and more harmony to our experience it's just literally the realization that we're always in a self-initiation process like if our car breaks down if we are having a, a a feud or a fight or an argument with you know, our loved ones, it's all part of our spiritual journey. And it's the awareness that we bring into that, that can bring shifts. And it's, you know, and then everything aligns, you know, the mortgage, the very third dimensional things, they start to align as well. As I said, it's all about um, cultivating that internal reality, our inner cosmos, so that everything in the physical just miraculously aligns and we move into that more graceful efficiency and flow and um you know it's not saying that challenges don't arise but it's how we move through them knowing that we're a spiritual being and how we can use that higher perspective to move through them and so it doesn't need to be such a struggle so it doesn't need to be so much resistance yes absolutely and i think that's the biggest key and the reason why I think this could be of interest to everyone is that I don't think anyone would deny that to most people, life is more of a struggle than anything else. The, the moments of joy, the moments of, of bliss, the moments of feeling free feel pretty minuscule for most people. It's the min min minority of time where you say, oh, this was such a nice day. I finally got to feel relaxed. Most of the time we're stressed, we're constricted, we're worried, we're anxious, all of these things have really overwrought our experience here. And so when I speak about these things to someone who may not really be op open to them yet or really aware, I kind of start with just the idea of being a little bit more free and having more peace. I think that's a good word for people to kind of be like, okay, I hear you on that. Like, I would love to not be so critical of myself, to be so angry at myself, angry at others. And I think this all results from not being able to feel like a, a creative spiritual being, which is what we truly are. Anything that denies its true self is never gonna be able to be at peace because it's at a constant state of dis-ease. When you're not aligned with what's most you know, at ease with you, you're gonna be uncomfortable. Absolutely, absolutely. and. This is why I always refer to the sustainability um, in terms of our awakening journey. You know, we're here to create sustainable peace, sustainable love, sustainable joy. Yeah. You know, we've actually been experiencing a very bipolar um, earth. You know, actually all of us carry trauma from this bipolar energy you know, most of us are running a bipolar program somewhere in our subconscious. You know, you don't need to have a diagnosis um, or a label to that. And what I mean about bipolar is I mean a volatility because we are, we've been raised in a society where we are so in fear of good or bad or right or wrong, um, left or right that kind of linearity, that duality experience yeah. that it creates this constant volatility. And so as we do our healing work, what we're doing is we're actually um, reducing that volatility so that we can have more of a, a sustained um, joy or a sustained peace. We don't need to kind of have so many highs and lows. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely... Um, know about this I, I suffered with chronic adrenal fatigue um, and I, I had lots of kind of health things um, growing up myself um, and, and it was all due to this kind of volatility this is like our default or it has been our default on this planet it's like everybody is existing was that a, was that a uh, lightning thunder yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, I want to be there right now. I miss that. Yeah. yeah, it's a very um it's a very jungle vibe here. We have lots of thunder and lightnings in the afternoon. Do you get monsoons, downpours? 
Oh, um, yeah, I don't know if I'd call them monsoons, but um, yeah, I guess maybe that, yeah, we get really intense rain, but that's what keeps the jungle so lush and, lush and green. Island. Yeah, exactly. And it's kind of fun because normally you get um, the morning of sun in rain season here, you get a morning of sun and then you kind of go to cocoon and hibernate inside while it rains, but that it feels fantastic. Better. I love hibernating. That sounds right. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> what a life. Yeah. What a life. Uh, more so I feel like that, that thunder was just a, a huge punctuation right there. Yeah, it was. But, yeah, it was. But yeah, it, it's it's really it is all about you know as we heal we're letting go of that volatility yeah. and, and it absolutely peace is the ultimate it is because with peace everything comes you know um financial abundance comes um love joy fulfillment you know whatever we deem as success um friendships it will all it's all encompassed in that peace that yeah. i feel yeah. like everybody is actually seeking everybody is searching some people don't realize that that's what they're seek seeking or some people don't even realize that they're in a state of constant volatility. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, yeah. And I think that also with peace comes kindness. I think peace enables kindness. And I think kindness is sort of like the elixir. The um, I had a, a meditation once where I, I got the phrase that I'm kindness is a, the muscle relaxant for souls to connect, you know? So it's because you said we're also volatile. When you're volatile, you are, you are prepped and ready to push others away because you are, afraid. you, you got to survive. You're afraid you're not, you're going to lose something. You're not going to, so we're pushing people and we're not, we don't feel safe expressing ourselves, honestly, emotionally, what's going on in our minds. We, we keep ourselves guarded. And, and so another word is we're all reacting rather than receiving right we're all very reactive rather than just active which i heard also heard once that um love is the only true action everything else is a reaction so that means that we are not offering the one thing that truly is source is just another word for love love is another word for source and is how i understand it so we're literally depriving ourselves of the one thing that would provide us all that sense of peace which is to know you are love and i'm love and everything is love and I can feel that peace because we're when we're reacting we're blocking that and then how are we supposed to offer kindness to others and when because and why I say it's the muscle relaxant is that when you offer kindness to someone they 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 they, they um soften up right they let down their guard because they say oh you you care you're really going to be nice to me safe. yes it feels safe it feels loving and not many of us feel that way in this world we feel like right. most people are competitive rather than cooperative. We feel like they're, you know, lying rather than being truthful. That's another huge principle of the divine feminine to me is, and an end of when we talk about connecting with higher beings or light beings, they only know, um, uh, why can I think of the word? Um, when you could read someone's thoughts, telepathy. Telepathy, yeah. They only know, they don't know what, what humans do, which is that we really, you know, um, micromanage and decide what we decide to share. But with telepathy, everybody's thoughts and feelings are just known. So you can't lie, but right. we are, have created a system where we are, we have the ability to conceal our truth. And that also breeds disease and dysfunction. Right. Yeah, exactly. This is the huge thing. And the diamond mm -hmm. heart teachings is ultimately the reopening of the heart is the, the permanent reopening of the heart, right? Because again, we go through this day-to-day -day experience, most of us of this volatility where maybe we'll experience a, a slight heart opening, but then we will contract and go into a place of defense yes. or a place of um, feeling um, vulnerable and unsafe. So it goes back to that healing of the root chakra, which is all about safety. We need to feel safe first. And the feminine needs to feel safe in order to love. When the female is in a survival state, she's in her root chakra and her heart is not able to open. And so it is only when she is 
um, cultivating safety for herself and, and provided for in her environment, that she is able to bloom, that she is able to, you know, awaken and come alive. Mm -hmm. And then that's when she can access her gifts and share them with others. Otherwise, we're just functioning in a place of really uh, lower self survival consciousness. Mm -hmm. And this can be so subconscious as well, um, which is something else that the eight pillars um, guides us through. Because as I said previously, it's only 5% of us. Um, in our conscious mind that we're aware of. And there's 95% yeah. of us that's hidden. And so even if we consciously think and believe that we are safe, there are likely aspects and fragments of us, our inner children, for instance, that are still functioning from a place of fear. They don't feel safe. So we need to find those pieces and we need to reintegrate them. We need to give them our love and attention and to, to heal them. Yeah. Um, so it's absolutely moving from this place of survival, no matter how subconscious that is, yeah. to moving into a place of, of love and bliss. And that's when everything aligns. And it's interesting you say about telepathy, because when I feel into telepathy, it feels really magnetic. Um, which is again a principle of the feminine it feels magnetic so it's like the law of attraction right everything um, magnetizes um, and from that place of telepathy that's when we align with other beings or other you know friends and uh, soul family who are connected to the same frequency or the same uh, soul blueprint that we carry and so there's this beautiful energy of like unity and coming together um to co-create um and join in kind of celebration together it kind of it kind of magnetizes and what is the main magnet of us and this is scientific what is the main magnet it's the heart mm. so if we have all these layers of protection and defense an armor around our hearts, which most of us have, or at least have experienced due to our childhood experiences, due to our trauma, due to our ancestral trauma. Um, we have to release that so that that magnet of the heart can really activate. And it's when that magnet activates that our truth finds us. So it's like those layers of protection are, are not truth. Those layers of defense Fence. those layers of survival they've got us to this place right we have survived but we don't need them anymore it's time to release them so that actually the beacon of our heart which are, is the beacon of our soul which is our real truth um beyond all that fear can radiate and it's through that radiance that we become incredible manifestors we manifest all the opportunities the friendships the romance everything that we desire our soul and heart desires it, it comes to us and again this is the, the feminine principle of creation so it's like no force is needed and it definitely doesn't come through um stress and worry and anxiety you know, we just need to kind of go within and do that work and then everything aligns beyond actually what we can even perceive. And this is why I always stay away from a lot of the kind of mainstream manifestation teachings, because truly what our soul can create for us is so much more magnificent and miraculous than our current human mind could even perceive. So why limit that? Yeah. Why limit that? Just allow, just do that inner work and allow that heart, that magnetic beacon to create the life that your soul actually can choose and create. So it's like putting our trust out into the universe and our soul and allow that to create mm -hmm. um, our optimum life, whatever our soul deems. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the magnificent part is that once you're able to do that healing and tap in and really open as you said, there's no force involved. There's no like grind, push hard for this. It's just, you just suddenly are sort of connected to this inner, these inner makings of, you know, connections and energy and all of this that just 
you're part of it, which we all are a part of it. But we, again, things kind of block us because we've created these, you know, these, these walls, these layers over ourselves that, you know, block our root chakra, and keep us disconnected. Right. And, and what I often use, what I like the sort of duality of is I feel, you know, you just, you described earlier, essentially inner child work, where you have to look at the parts of you that you've sort of rejected and the things that have happened to you traumatically that make you feel that you're not safe or that you're not worthy or lovable and that you kind of hide it. And so to me, it comes down to shifting that, that view of conditionality, it's conditionality and unconditional truth is unconditional. Love is unconditional. The feminine to me is unconditional. You don't have to do anything to be worthy, to be a divine being, N none of that. But we've created these rules where, well, you're only really a value if, and you're only really lovable if, and then we get terrified because all of us come into this world and we think, well, I don't want to get left behind. I don't want, I want to be loved. I want to be worthy. I want to matter to people, but things happen to us. And when you describe those layers, I feel we get these layers when we think things happen to us that deem us not good enough. And that's what will op often block our different chakras in our systems is when we think, well, I can't possibly open my heart because I'm, I'm wounded. I'm tarnished I'm damaged. But again, the feminine knows that was all part of growth. That was all, we come into life for this reason, to have these unique experiences, to grow as a soul and evolve. But we have the conception that these things define who we are and diminish us and damage us. But it's just not so because with unconditionality, nothing can change what you truly are. That's just right. Real. Right. I love that. I love that so much. And, you know, as I've gone through this own, my own journey with this of, of reopening my heart, which is ongoing, right? And this is another thing I always say, you know, we are limitless beings. There is always more of our truth for us to remember and integrate and embody. Um, but as I was going through my own journey of, of initial healing and heart opening, um, which was very simultaneous with my out-of-body experiences um, when I would be taken up um, literally into the cosmos to receive different perspectives of creation. Um, I, would, I, I also began to connect to um, my, my now husband. So I, I began to connect. Before you met him? Yes. I began to connect oh. to his soul um and it was profound and and actually now this is the interesting thing and i actually believe this is true for a lot of people it's just we don't remember it so when i started having this um you know the permanent reopening of my heart and i started to remember and and uh communicate commune with my higher self um my higher consciousness i also began to not only receive communication from his soul, um, a lot of which would happen, most of it would happen in dream time. But as I began to cultivate that more, I actually was able to um, kind of just communicate in meditation or just day to day. Uh, I also started to remember that I had actually been always communicating with his soul ever since childhood. And I went through this kind of two week period uh, I think it was about two weeks where I was having all of the, these dream recalls. I don't know. If, I think most people get that. You can just be doing things around the house, like washing up or whatever. And you might have a memory of a, a dream that you used to have or, or had a few a while ago. But this was like intense. This was like so many dreams um, throughout my whole life of, of this knowing of this person, this soul. Um, and so... It, it really is a kind of testimony to that reopening of the heart and how we can align with, you know, soul aligned love. You know, my my romantic life before um, my current relationship was, you know, just crazy and very unstable and ungrounded and very karmic, if we want to use that word. Um, very rooted in pain, very rooted in struggle, very rooted in suffering. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, yeah, just due to the reopening of the heart that I started to remember this 
divine love, you know? And I, I believe it's, we all have that, whether it's in romantic or whether it's through a community or a friendship, um, it's, it's through the reopening of the heart that we can remember that kind of cosmic quantum love that, you know, I don't think it's really been anchored or remembered in this planet yet because we have all been in such a state of um, conditional love, you know, and we place those conditions of our, on ourselves, first of all, you know, if, we, if we've got conditions for other people and the way that they treat us, it's because we hold those same conditions for ourselves. And this was a big process that I had to go through um, to prepare me for, for my current relationship anyway. Um, but absolutely, it's it's the power of the heart which brings us back into unconditional love and um, and unconditional bliss and unconditional everything. Yeah. yeah. Now, Kate, can you tell us how did you finally meet him in person in real in this life in this realm? Yeah. Plane? Yeah. It was really <laughs> very interesting. Um, yeah. Um, Again, for anybody who's like a human design buff, um, I am a 2-4 projector. So um, a lot of my connections, my soul connections, or like uh, my work, my career, things that are important to me will always come through my network. You know, it comes through that magnetic field of um, contacts. So we actually met through... Um, a mutual friend, a mutual connection. Um, and it was Jesse, my husband, who actually saw me first through social media, actually. Um, and so it was him. Funnily enough, we speak about the feminine oracle. Um, he actually was the one to see me first. He was the one to recognize me first. Um, and yeah, he... He, he describes it as when he saw me and um, he just had this knowing of home, like soul home, um, which is just such a beautiful way to describe it. And I think a lot of us can relate to that when we meet our soul family, they just feel like home and, um, and a peace, you know, and that, that home, it's not like karmic familiarity because there's definitely magnetism with that karmic familiarity but this is the, the feeling of I guess unconditional love or peace um I guess we can have another conversation another time but there's many many different layers of this story how we came together and he actually the year he's seven years older than me so the year that I was born he was seven he started to become obsessed with um a girl he didn't know he just became obsessed with this knowing that there was a girl out there with the same birthday as him. And we actually share the same birthday, but no. seven years apart. That mm -hmm. is not true. Wait, when's your birthday? It is the 3rd of June. You all have to feminize. And he was obsessed with somebody that he just knew there was a girl out there with the same birthday as him? Yeah. Oh yeah. He gosh. became obsessed. He couldn't, he couldn't let go of that feeling and that knowing so at the age of seven he began kind of looking for not looking as like outwardly looking but he was becoming aware that you know there was someone out there with his birthday I know it's it's really it's really crazy <laughs> it's oh really my crazy. gosh that is I love that stuff that's so because it's so interesting to think about because at any point in your life you can say I believe I will be with a partner and you know they're out there somewhere because they've obviously been born at a certain point and you know they're out there and it's like what are they doing and, and what what are all the twists and turns that will eventually bring us together so it's so fascinating and crazy to think that he was out there trying to like figure you out at age seven <laughs> but you had you had just been born probably <laughs> I was literally just born yeah it's so funny and you know I always say you know if, if you truly desire you know that kind of soul love like it's out there for you you know you just have to do the inner work and allow that heart to open so that that natural magnetism brings you together and I feel like our souls my husband and mine we chose this very kind of almost comical um 
physical example of that so to share it with others so to inspire them um like look this actually is real like it really is there it's really out there for you you just need to become a vibrational match to it um and and it will literally the laws of the universe will just create something which we wouldn't even be able to conceive like you can't make this stuff up <laughs> yeah i'm curious are you are you open to sharing how old you both were when you met oh when we both met so i um yeah we actually met um so i was 34 and he was 42 if i've got my maths right okay wow and kate do you can you say because you know being someone who's still out there hoping to connect with that person, do you feel like there's one thing that you did to allow your heart to open or allow to be able to receive? Because, you know, when you feel like you're blocked, it can get pretty frustrating. You know, I think a lot of us go that way, like, what do I do? Like, how can I get through this block that's keeping me not just from your, your potential soul partner, but also just like happiness from, you know, prosperity, just different things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, this is what the Diamond Heart teaching is all about. This is about the eight pillars. Um, this is, I guide women through the journey so that they can release every single one of their blocks in every single life area. But just to give you one uh, tool from the eight pillar toolbox. Um, which well, should we take I, a look at the diagram? Because you sent me the diagram. So I could bring that up oh, on the screen share. For those who are watching the video, um, for those listening, Kate will still describe it, but is that okay, Kate, if I go ahead and bring that up? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so here it is. All right, there we go. For those watching. Right, right. so here we have what I call the soul dial. In fact, my husband came up with that name. The soul dial, I call it the compass. It looks literally like a compass, right? And it takes us from pillar one round to pillar eight so we have the child the goddess the crone and the star mother and so these are just different layers of us that we integrate back into wholeness so that we can experience the full expression of divine femininity empowerment in every way okay and so at the top so i'm looking at the outer ring and we'll see here for the first quarter, we have awareness and confusion. So that's when we're remember, we're just beginning to awaken to the mystery, what I call the mystery. And the mystery is literally anything that you haven't yet seen or remembered. It could be a trauma or it could be a gift. Um, it doesn't matter. It's just the mystery. It's the unknown. Okay, so we have awareness and confusion so this is where we become aware of those blocks okay so this is where we become aware okay i have been experiencing um a, a block around let's say love or i have become aware of a pattern that i've been reliving again and again and again in my romantic relationship so we're becoming aware of that however there is confusion because we don't know why why is that? And the eight pillars take you on a journey to discover that yourself. So we, through lots of different tools and techniques, um, and I can give you one really incredible tool that I use almost every day. I continue to use, and I will continue to use probably till the day I die. Just realize, so we can use the block Okay, so instead of focusing it on it as a block and a limitation, we start to celebrate that block because the block, within the block, within the shadow pattern or within the block, within the monkey mind, whatever it is, we, within the limited self, we, there's gold. There is gold. And this is why I always say the star mother, she, the star mother is the embodied feminine. Okay, so she is fully kind of integrated and she is also an alchemist, what I say alchemist, because she has learned how to turn all her lead, all her darkness into gold. And so, okay, so we start to see we have a block. 
So we start to shift our perspective on that. We start to say, okay, this isn't a negative thing because this is actually a gateway, a doorway into more gold. Okay, so that's first of all perspective shift. And so it's like, well, where is the gold? So normally underneath every block or limiting belief, sometimes they're simultaneous, right? So say for instance, a block around relationship might come with a whole load of limiting beliefs. Like I'm not worthy of somebody who loves me. I'm not worthy of love or I'm not worthy of a sustainable relationship or whatever it is, or I'm not pretty enough. I'm not good enough. Whatever those limiting beliefs that we hold in our subconscious. Okay. Um, they are, they are actually holding underneath a desire. And so what we need to do is we need to find that desire. So we stop focusing on the problem and we start to find the gateway, which leads us into a solution. So first of all, we need to find the desire that we hold and we need to really let go of all the stories and we need to let go of all the limiting beliefs and the sabotaging thought forms that we hold around that block. And there's many different tools and teachings that I could share. I could do a whole book on this. But what we need to do is we just need to start, first of all, for the very, very basic, is we need to start to find the desire, as well as, of course, um, finding all the traumas and why we would hold those limiting beliefs. And these limiting beliefs, don't forget, they are sneaky and they lurk in the shadow of ourselves. So these are limiting beliefs that we may have in inherited through our mothers, through our grandmothers. These are maybe through our primary caregivers, our teachers, our friends that lurk in the shadows. So we can do a lot of different work um, to find the root of all those limiting beliefs, simultaneously looking at our trauma, but not getting stuck on the shadow, always bringing it back to the desire. And I would say keep this really simple and aligned with our soul. So I say let go of all the details and the stories. It's a soul frequency. So what are we really looking for when we want a relationship? We're looking to experience love. We're looking to experience love. And then we need to start to take action every day, small action to provide that love for ourselves. Now, to say we might, uh, recognize that we actually don't feel safe to open our heart. Just to give an example of what we used before, we don't feel safe to open our heart. Well, then we need to somehow start to provide ourselves with more safety, taking action on uh, recreating our what I call our container of soul. We need to take action to create more safety um, so that we can bring in and align with more of uh, a true love that will enable us and also require us to open our heart. Mm -hmm. So this is a really big topic and I don't yeah. think I can answer it in one, yeah. one go, but I would say the main thing to remember when we are experienced limiting beliefs, which are connecting to blocks, start to shift the perspective and awareness and try to make it into an exploration. So we start to begin to explore the desire beneath the block, beneath the monkey mind, the fear, the doubt, beneath every fear, beneath every limiting thought, there is a desire. And you have to look at the desire and refine that desire, refine, because we have layers of desire. Because we have like layers of desire that might be still rooted in our lower self that's still wanting attention or external validation. And that's okay. We don't want to judge that, but we want to get it down and down and down, refine it to its very core essence, which is normally rooted in uh, recreating unity, recreating love, reconnecting. Uh, with others, that's really at the foundation of all of our desires. So it's about getting really honest with our blocks, 
all the layers of ourselves that are holding limiting beliefs, connecting to those blocks and just untangling it. And it's a process. It is a process. And that's what the eight pillars is because my own journey has been a mess. It's been a mess. And I have uh, been taken on a journey to, to bring this through this teaching, which actually brings like a simplicity and organization to that internal chaos. Because sometimes we, when we've got a block, we don't know where it begins. We don't know where it begins or where it ends. And so we need to kind of refine um, and clear the way of all the stories and the junk and the noise that encompasses the block. Yeah. Um, and when we find it, it's actually really easy. It's really easy. We stop, we let go. We have to let go of the story. We have to let go of all of the, the, the trauma that's connected to that block. And we have to start to focus on the core essence of what our heart desires and then taking implement steps in the physical reality. So there is a lot of different processes, but it can be broken down to a very simple um, step-by-step process and we are complicated beings you know we have many different layers of us and this is where I think um it gets confusing to a lot of people because a lot of our blocks are entangled in other blocks and so we have to kind of have a perspective a guidepost to help to sort everything out yeah. to understand okay so this comes from this this comes from this this is what this is why I have this limiting belief, you know, and start to untangle it all. And yeah. Um, yeah, once you untie that, then that's what helps to open you up and free you. So that right. is so beautiful, Kate. And that compass is remarkable. And I haven't seen anything like that. That's pretty, that's amazing that you created this unique expression and offering. And I can tell you have so much knowledge and so much has come through. I imagine there are many books to come and many teachings to come. And I do know that you're doing a retreat around this, right? The inactivation retreat. Would you like to share about that? Right, exactly. Thank you. Yes. So um, this is actually something that I was guided to do as I was bringing all of this through, as you say, I was like, wow, it's so much. How am I going to teach this? Because it is, you know, books worth. And I was told, um, by my higher self, the best way to start to share this in a way that women can actually integrate and actually create shifts is by facilitating in-person uh, retreats. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm calling them my star mother gatherings. So it's um, hosted and facilitated here in Costa Rica, um, which is incredible energy for um, divine feminine support it is just so rich in um, nature and um, that energy that is really soothing to the nervous system. Mm -hmm. So that this is almost like the container to help us journey into the eight pillars. Um, and so I'm going to be hosting um, 10 day retreats. So 10 full days, sorry, seven full days, seven full day retreats in person. And it's going to be so beautiful. We're really here to celebrate our unique expressions. So we're all here to embody this divine femininity, but we're all here to do it through our unique perspectives and our offerings and just our beingness, you know, and how to um, find that, how to remember our soul blueprint, how we can refine that and just express it day to day and, this is really an offering for any woman who is on her journey of awakening, no matter where she is. She, it's just the, first, the only requirement is, I would say, that she has at least begun to realize that she is awakening to something beyond her current state of being. So maybe she's just remembering that she does actually hold blocks or limitations or traumas, or maybe she's beginning to remember that we have guides, we have angels, we have different dimensions of our soul. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter where we're at because the beautiful thing about the eight pillars 
is it can speak to each and every one of us, no matter where we are on our journey. Um, and so it's really this beautiful exploration of femininity, stepping into our power, um, cultivating a deeper sense and connection to spirit. This is really a foundation of my work um, because it's been so woven in my own life story and my own life journey. So how we can cultivate that, how we can strengthen um, our connection to spirit, our higher self, our guides and the universe, and ultimately how we can live our best lives with most grace, most ease, most peace mm -hmm. and most love. That is so beautiful, Kate. And it sounds incredible. And I would love to join for that. Where if people want to learn about these retreats, they want to learn about you. They want to find out about more about the eight pillars, about the diamond heart teachings. Where can people find you? Where can we get this information? When will dates be available for these retreats? Oh, yes. Thank you. So the retreat dates, the, my first retreat that I'm offering is going to be in January, the 27th to the 4th of February. Um, and you can find out more information on my website, which is www.star-mothers.com. Um, and there I have lots of links to videos, um, my YouTube channel, which I'm just um, establishing now. I will be doing weekly videos where I will be sharing more of these teachings. Um, so yeah, head over to my website and you can find out much more. Fantastic. And I will put that in the show notes along with your, some of your social media links so people can learn about you, see more about your teachings. And I can't wait to do so as well, Kate. And thank you so much for stepping forward and, you know, having the courage to bring these gifts to light and to speak on these things. Cause it's not always easy or comfortable at first to kind of step out with, all right, I know these are some things that some people don't even think is real and other people might be really curious about and really benefit from. So which do I choose? And, you know, I'm definitely all about those of us who choose to take a little bit of a risk, be the fool, if you will. The fool in tarot is the one that will step out on a new venture because they believe in a vision that is possible. They believe in a new path in a new way and they'll take the risk. So thank mm -hmm. you for doing that. And thank you so much for holding this space. Um, you're a beautiful interviewer. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Kate. And I'd love to have you back again. And we can talk more about specifics and maybe like one, like focus more on one talking topic and get deep into your work. Cause it's just so fascinating and really, right. really needed and, and lovely. So thank you I'd so love much, Kate, for being with us. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Love as well. Right back at you. Thank you.